I heard you once say in a brilliant speech that over 75% of current U.S. American citizens could not pass the U.S. citizenship test. Um, and thinking about what you said, does that, does that make American nationalism kind of delusion? Great question. So <laughs> uh, historical literacy is at an all-time low because it has to be. In other words, in order to get over on people, you, you need to have a certain amnesia, right? You need to have a certain forgetfulness because the people who remember might hold you accountable to what they remember. And so um, it is true that um, the latest stats you know, show that most people in this country, all 300 million plus, uh, about 75% of them would fail a test for U.S. citizenship if they were given it right in front of, right in front of them, right at this moment, they would fail it. Um, high schoolers, um, they graduate doing extremely poor on U.S. history. Their U.S. history is, is abysmal. But it's not just them. There were studies done or analysis done on members of Congress about how much hidden U.S. history they knew, abysmal. So much so, a very wealthy white financier um, decided to create a program to teach Congress men and women about U.S. history and governance. Imagine that, right? So these instances all point to not simply a matter of, of, of historical Ill illiteracy. It points to really that, you know, um, American nationalism, you know, is, is what it always has been, which is a fiction. And what generates it, what motivates it, is an emotional and passionate attachment to the idea of a white republic. So when you see these white folks, you know, with their with their Confederate flags and and and, and their you know Dukes of Hazard you know cars, and 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 and, 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 and their their sort of militarized fatigue and, and going out you know practicing shooting animals and you know shooting African folks you know on the streets, um, when they engage in these kind of practices, it's really to satisfy this ideological urge of destroying the boogeyman that they created. In fact, this goes back to a, uh, a, a quote or a saying from James Baldwin, which was captured in this wonderful film called I'm Not Your Negro, where towards the end he said, you know, essentially he's talking to, you know, white America, where he says, you know, um, I'm not a Negro, you know, I'm not a nigger. But you got to ask yourself, why did you create the nigger? Why did you create the Negro, right? Because that's, that's the central question for them, right? That's their problem. And so for us, we, people of African ancestry, that problem becomes our problem too, because we live within that question, right? We're trapped within the bookends of that question, right? Um, and so there's no escaping that question for us because we are the question and we are the answer. Um, and the answer for us is violence. <laughs> Me, recipient of that white violence, right? Um, and so in a very real way, um, yes, white nationalism and, and U.S. nationalism is a fiction, but because we are in, 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 in the corridors and the bookend of that fiction, we are essentially the fiction, and the way that we are resolved is by maiming, annihilating, <laughs> ritually, right? And that's why, for example, you see that on the TV says, you know, they replay, you know, a brother or sister being killed. They'll have it on loop, every channel, right? Whereas, um, you know, the, the, the white assailant who shot this teenager, knocking on the wrong door, his identity is being kept a secret. There's much more occurring subconsciously within the society and within the psyche of, of, of us and with, within the white imagination that requires much more interrogation than simply um, have, having issue with the Confederate flag or taking issue with the monument. To me, that's superfluous. That's superficial. We got to dig much deeper.